This is Radio TV Phono Nut, and here's another one I'd like to get rid of. It's a Sear Silvertone. It was actually made by Audio Industries for Sears. Uh, them and Waters Conley and Karen Electronics made a lot of record players for Sears. Uh, this one here has been overhauled, new capacitors, new resistors, motor clean and lubricated. I replaced the cartridge with a 89T plug-in for 78 use. Actually, it's a cartridge out of an old school record player that still had a good 78 tip. New power cord, and you can even see the tubes glowing through the vent hole on top of the motor board. The next day she told everything. The original cartridge was a 3 volt crystal. This one's a much lighter tracking 1.3 volt ceramic, but it still gets plenty loud enough for the average user. But one was too many for me, and now I don't care, baby, wherever we go. We're gonna put on a kiss and show. You shouldn't have kissed me so. Alright, we'll make this short and sweet. If somebody wants this, there's a link in the description where you can buy it. And here's another one that's in the project stage. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it's a little metal cased, four speed, solid state GE record player from about late 55 or not 55, late 65 or, or early 66 based on the date codes. It's in nice shape. Whoever had it took care of it. I've cleaned and lubricated the mechanism and overhauled the amplifier. There was a bunch of out of tolerance resistors and of course the electrolytic capacitors needed to go and everything's working but we have a dead cartridge. And it just seems like that's the that's the that's a big stumbling block with many of these types of players, both tube and solid state that use a 3 volt turnover crystal cartridge you can, you can figure about 85 percent of the time they're going to be bad and new ones haven't been made in probably 40 years maybe longer and new old stock ones are not always cheap and oftentimes they have issues from old age so what I'm going to do with this one is just sit it to the side and I'll be on the lookout for a cheap cartridge if somebody if somebody comes up with a cheap one that they want to sell on eBay like 10 or 15 bucks I'll grab it now it doesn't happen much but it happens like the other day I found somebody that was selling an 81T cartridge that's the school record player cartridge for uh, $11 plus $3.78 shipping and I figured that was just for one cartridge and thought well that's cheaper than what they usually are so I bought it and the guy actually sent me two sleeves of brand new cartridges uh, one 13T which is the stereo version uh, one 89T and eight 81Ts all with the LP and 78 flip needle I haven't checked them all to make sure they're all good, but if only one of them's good, I've gotten my money's worth. If they're all good, that's just wonderful because I definitely have a place over here where I can put all of those. They certainly won't go to waste, and I'd like to find another deal like that. Cosmetically, this GE is in nice shape, and the whatever this rubber or plastic or whatever it is that runs along the edges, it's still in good shape and so many of them aren't. It's all cracked and crumbling. And this one is worth putting a cartridge in, just not worth putting an expensive cartridge in. Because if I decide to sell this, I don't want to have more money in it than what I can get out of it. I, I want to at least be able to get my money out of it. And here's a quick way you can determine if your crystal cartridges have output or not. I'll go ahead and tell you this one might not be as dead as I thought it was. I think it was just a 
the uh, positive wire on our cartridge connector was not making good contact. In fact, it wasn't making contact at all. It fell off whenever I rem tried to remove the connector. But anyway, set your digital voltmeter to AC and on the 2 volt scale or even the 20 volt scale for the higher voltage cartridges and just rub your finger across the needle or the bridge that the needle rests on and you can see this cartridge is it's got output and we'll do the same thing to the other side these needles are shot and need to be replaced but Well, all right, I'm stimulating the other side. Yeah, it jumped up to over four volts there. So yeah, this cartridge is still plenty hot. All we need to do is uh, reattach our tone arm wire and put a couple of good needles on here, and we ought to have a working record. Here's an example of a new cartridge that was a dud. This is an Aresta brand, which is a knockoff of a, or this particular cartridge is a knockoff of a Ronette supposed to have three volts output. I'm rubbing my finger across the uh, stylus tip. Hang on, let me get my meter leads from getting too intimate with each other. I'm set to the two volt scale on my meter and I'm rubbing this needle like crazy and about 0.3 is the best I'm getting out of this. So this cartridge is, has pretty much died from sitting on a shelf. It's been my experience, these Arista cartridges don't really hold up. They were a cheap cartridge back in the 70s, and they just didn't hold up. And I'm not getting a click when I rub my finger across it, but I'm getting a buzz here. So that tells me, since the cartridge has output and we're getting a buzz here, that tells us that our ground lead must have an open in it. Here's the un underside. And there's the amplifier. As you can tell, I've replaced the capacitors and some of the resistors. I had to, shall we say, manufacture by putting two in series. It seems like these solid-state rigs always have oddball value resistors that are not common in tube sets. And what I usually keep on hand is basic, basically for the tube sets, so I, I had to manufacture some things. Yes, this is a selenium rectifier. It's a it's actually a selenium bridge rectifier meant for a negative voltage. I started just to go ahead and change it out for a silicon bridge, but we're dealing with low voltage here, and the output seems to be spot on, so I don't think there's any danger of it blowing up. And it's lasted 50-some-odd years, so it'll probably hold up even from for a long time to come. And yep, our ground wire has broken. All right, I fixed our cartridge leads, and that electrical tape is just to give it a little strain relief to, because it's very easy for those little small wire wires to break, even though they're wire nutted together. All right, now let's see what we get. Well, I'm getting something, but it's wide open, and it should be a lot louder than that, so still got some investigating to do. All right, I got the cartridge installed. As you saw on the meter, it had good output. Uh, we get a good buzz, or a decent buzz, when I touch the positive connection, and we have continuity on both leads between the cartridge and the circuit board. But this is all I get. And that's wide open. So I'm inclined to believe that since we're getting a good buzz at the uh, positive terminal, but we're not getting no more than what we're getting, and we have good continuity from the uh, leads to the circuit board, I think there might be a problem with the ground connection from where the cartridge connects to the circuit board to uh, somewhere else in the, on there on the board somewhere. So we need to pull the board out and see if we can find out what's going on here. Alright, using my 
body that's doubling as a signal generator, we're getting a much louder buzz at the volume control than we're getting at the cartridge input. Well, now I'm going directly into the cartridge input on the board, and we've got a good buzz there. Let's get back to the cartridge and see we, what we get. Well, this is rather interesting and something I don't think I've ran into before. You saw where this cartridge had output on the meter, and it looked like a pretty stout output. Well, apparently, when the cartridge is in circuit, apparently it's not working, because I temporarily connected in a static 81T, which is a 1.3 volt school record player cartridge. Uh, if we don't break the thing before we get it fixed. But anyway, I temporarily clipped an 81T across the cartridge input of the amplifier and scraped my finger across the needle on the 81T and got a much louder tick out of the speaker than what I was getting with this Varco cartridge. So we're going to have to come up with a Varco cartridge somewhere or possibly rig up some kind of mount for this tone arm so I can mount an 81T cartridge in it. Of course, this is not your standard half-inch mount tone arm, so that's going to be a little bit difficult to do, but I also know these original type cartridges are are getting to be scarce and expensive, and I don't like scarce and expensive. I like plentiful and cheap. Well, since I don't have a cartridge handy and don't know when I'm going to get a cartridge handy, I think we're going to break away from this for now. Partly because I want to go ahead and give the silver tone some exposure. We need to get rid of that thing. And whenever I get a cartridge in here, then we'll jump back on this one and I'll show you the outcome. I could just take the tone arm off of that spare tone record player that I featured a few videos back, the one that obviously nobody wanted on eBay because it has half inch mounting and it already has an 89T bracket in it, but since this record player is in such nice shape and since that arm is a little bit different than what's on here, I'd, I'd rather kind of keep this original if possible. I realize if I have to make some kind of mount for an 89T mounting bracket, it's not going to be all original, but at least we'll still have the original arm. And like I said, these flipper cartridges are getting hard to find and expensive. At least 89Ts and 81Ts, at least to some degree, are still easier to find. And, of course, you won't have as much volume as what the 3-volt cartridge would give, but it should still be loud enough for the average person to listen to. And when that cartridge fails, all you got to do is unplug it from the holder and plug a new one in and you're done. And another option for this, and would probably be the uh, best option as far as being able to play modern records, but it would be the most labor intensive, would be to install a modern Fansteel P228 cartridge that's stereo, wire it for mono, of course, and then I'd have to construct a preamp stage using an FET to bump the output up. I have done that on some of these solid state players and some of the tube players, but a lot of times the the amount of time and all involved in building the circuit and getting everything just right is often more than what the player is worth. So I think before I do that, I'm going to at least try to find a reasonably priced cartridge that I can put in this one that will give us a decent amount of volume. 